had to live such a hard life as one of your children. I question, shouldn't things be better for me? So many valleys, too many hills. I thought, but I was wrong, Father. I'm sorry, I didn't see. Beloved love, your redeeming one blood was given for the sinners, for the debtors. Now my debt has fully been paid. You said, my Savior, I owe feel my life. You said, oh my forever, I owe you my every day. Oh 
tonight for whatever you're going to say. Which one? 25. All right, 17. We'll get 25 in just a minute. 17.
Thank the Lord. Jesus loves old sinners. Amen. amen. I'm, that's what we all was, amen. You say, well, I, I know Andrew's story. He got saved when he was six years old. Probably didn't do a whole lot wrong, but you know what? He was just as lost as the drunkard, the murderer, the whoremonger. It still took the blood of Jesus Christ uh, to cleanse him from his sins and to change him and set his feet on a solid foundation. You know, I'm glad that Jesus is a friend of sinners, amen. I'm glad he'll clean you up. I'm glad he'll even call him old sinners to preach, amen. Amen. That's all I, just old dirty, rotten sinner who's saved by grace, amen. Then one day God counted it fit for me uh, to be able to carry the gospel. I don't know why he did. I didn't ask for it, but man, I thank God that he considered uh, me worthy uh, of that call. I love him tonight. I appreciate him. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I was once in sin's prison. Once in sin prison until I met the Savior. Amen. There's liberty and freedom in Christ Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm no longer in bondage. I don't serve sin anymore. I'm serving Jesus. Amen. I was thinking when Jason said what he did. I'm working in a 7,000 square foot house. It's the most gorgeous place uh, that you could ever see. But you know what? I'm up there eight hours a day. But I got to leave, Jason. It ain't mine. But one of these days, I'm going to go to a place that that's going to pale in comparison to and it's going to be mine. I'm going to be like Jason. I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be like, hey Jason, come and look and see what I got. You ain't going to believe this. He's like, I'm going to, I believe it. I believe it. You know why? Because God wouldn't just like it. Amen. I'm glad that God's got some stuff laid up for his people. Amen. Glad I'm saved. Who's got a song on your heart tonight? Anybody got a song? Come on, Lord. I know she can. I've heard her Sometimes I wake up
exactly what he needs. It feels good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. If you didn't feel what I felt in this choir tonight, you don't have the same thing that I got. Amen. Oh, I could feel it in the singing when we got to talking about God saving old sinners. Because I was one of them old sinners. Amen. I was one of them people that it wasn't, I wasn't worth saving, but God seen something else in my life. He seen something that He wanted. And I'm thankful tonight that He did. Amen. Amen. I get so excited tonight. I'm fired up. I feel like I've already been to church. Oh, I love Him tonight. I get filled up when it talks about the Father. He don't owe me a thing. He's been so good to me. Amen. If He's been good to you, we all ought to be praising and shouting His name. Amen. I feel good to be here tonight. Y'all pray for me. I'm gonna to try to deliver this tonight. I don't. I told Brother Andrew. I said all I've got, all I've got tonight is just a thought that the Lord's given me, and I got, a, I got some text uh, that the Lord's placed on my heart. I remember the second that He gave it to me. I know how He fills my mind, and He floods things in my soul, and He shows me different things each and every day. And I know this message was for somebody tonight, but I don't know how to preach it. I don't claim to be nothing. I don't claim to be a no great preacher. I have to trust in the Lord for everything that I do. I pray, I pray tonight that the Lord would help me. I ask y'all, Lord, to, uh, I ask y'all to, uh, to pray that the Lord would help me tonight. I can't do anything without Him. I have to have His. I have to have a touch from Him. I pray, the, I pray uh, that I would uh, have good liberty here tonight. But I also pray that, I also pray that the Lord would, uh, would anoint me. That I would, uh, I'd be able to give you the words that He's put in my heart, that He's placed in my heart tonight. If you would, uh, if you got your Bibles, uh, go to Acts chapter 3. If you would, stand for the reading of God's Word. Y'all already got me wore out. If you got your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, say Amen. amen. We're going to read verses 1 through 11 if you want to follow along. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes on him, and John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that, that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together Unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. If you would be seated. I pray that the Lord would help me. I pray uh, that, uh, that I would uh, just follow the, uh, the Spirit. Uh, I, I would follow exactly what the, uh, the Lord would have me to say tonight. I pray that uh, the Lord would fill me with His Spirit. I can't do anything without Him, but I fully trust in Him uh, because He is good. He's proven to me too many times that He's good. And I, I want to dive into this for just a second. And, I, and if, if I could have your attention uh, and you would uh, just be, uh, be patient with me. Uh, I don't know how this will go. The Lord knows exactly. 
exactly uh, what He's placed on my heart. But I want to focus for just a second uh, on something different. A lot of times when you get in this Word, and if I was to ask somebody, if somebody, some of you Bible readers, if I said Acts chapter 3, and I said the first 10 verses, what is it about? There would be, there would be people come to me and they would, they would uh, recite pretty much what I just went through. And they would, they would talk about uh, Peter and John uh, uh, going into the temple at the hour of prayer. They would, talk about, uh, they would talk about this man who was laid at the gate daily, who received strength, uh, but not because of Peter and John, but because of, of their faith in Jesus Christ that he could do all things. But this man received strength as well because of his faith, uh, because he was laid there daily. And I want to slow down for just a second and tell you, this is not going to be part of the message, but I want to slow down and tell you, if you don't have friends like this man, you need some friends like this man. This word don't say the age of this man. It don't tell uh, to my understanding and to, to what that I have read. I can't find anywhere in this word where it tells uh, the, a timeline of, of how long this man laid here. But it does say he laid at this gate daily. And I would say there were days where he got a little frustrated. There were days where he, he, he didn't understand what was going on. And that's kind of what I want to get into tonight. There were days when he didn't, I'm sure that he didn't feel like, uh, feel like being carried there. He thought I'm just a burden to somebody. Uh, that, I, that I'm just uh, making them carry me down there for no reason. But he had some good friends. If you don't have good friends like that tonight, I pray that you get some. Uh, but I want to focus on something just a little bit different. Uh, I, I've been praying and I've been asking the Lord uh, to show me different things. And like I was saying, if you get in this Word, uh, sometimes it's easy to see the obvious. And it's easy to see uh, exactly what this Word says. But it's a little harder uh, when you want to get in this Word and you want to find, you want to pick something else out. You want God to show you something that's different. You want God to show you something that's got uh, some sustenance to it. That means something just a little bit different. And tonight I want to try to bring that out. Uh, it says in verse 10, And they knew that it was He which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. Jump on down to 11. It says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. In verse 10 and verse 11, there are two words that caught my eye. And it was the fact that they were greatly wondering. Uh, I, I, I couldn't get past this when I continued to read it. I, my, the Lord just kept prodding at me and picking at my heart and showing me uh, uh, different things in this Word. And I got to reading and I got to focusing on this greatly wondering thing. And let me, uh, let me first say uh, that anyone who tells you I've heard it since I was uh, this tall uh, to, to now, that I'm, uh, now that I'm 28 years old, I've heard it uh, for, for different things. But I've heard people say, uh, well, people... People don't understand, and, and, and this word of God don't it, it don't uh, it don't hold the same weight in today's time because we're facing a very different thing today than what they were facing at that time. And I want to tell you that's nothing but a lie straight from the pits of hell. That's exactly uh, what the world wants you to think that this word that this word don't hold any weight. That there's no good in it. That's what they want you to think. They want you to think that this don't have any sustenance to it. But I'm telling you uh, tonight that uh, what. What's in this word is exactly what we're facing in today's times. Uh, there ain't nothing changed. E everything in this word is absolutely true. There ain't anything that's not the truth. There is not anything uh, that our minds can't conceive. If we want to understand the word of God, he'll give it to us. Amen. But I want to uh, I want to read something uh, just just a little bit different. If I can get you the right text, I've got a, a note here. If you'll bear with me. Matthew chapter 26. In verse 41. You see, this is a time when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And they're about to take our Lord and Savior to a cross at Calvary. And He's praying to the Father. He's praying for strength. 
And the other disciples are asleep. The other disciples, maybe they weren't taking it as serious as what he was. But this is what he says in 26 and 41. He says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I want to apply that to verse 11 tonight back in Acts chapter 3. You see, we see a group of people here that just seen an amazing work of God that others may have not ever seen. We see an amazing work of God. God walked this, the Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth for 33 and a half years and He has just died and been resurrected and taken home to be with the Father. He died for the remission of our sins. But there was one thing there that caught me different. It said they were greatly wondering. And if I had a title for tonight's message, it would be, you don't have to wonder anymore. You don't have to wonder anymore. You see, what I just read you out of Matthew chapter 26, it said that our spirit indeed is willing our spirit wants to do well. We, str we strive each and every day to do good. But our, our, our flesh is weak. You see, I've heard people talk about dreams that they've had at night. And they talk about, they don't understand. They said, sometimes I'd wake up in the night and this is me as well. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd have to pray and beg God and say, God, take these thoughts out of my mind. Why do I even have thoughts like this? It's because my flesh is weak. It's because my flesh is weak. It's because I want to do good. But when I'm in my sleep, I'm not in, I'm not, I'm not in that spirit. I'm not in that spirit every single time. My mind wanders and it goes places that I can't control. But you see, these folks here, they just seen a miraculous work of God. And I began to think, about how easily that Satan can get into our minds. How he can get into our minds. And when he can get into our minds, he can control how our hearts feel. He can control things that, that we do when we allow him to get into our heart. He can control things that, oh, things that we normally wouldn't do because this flesh is weak. But you see, these folks, oh, they just watched a man who they've seen lay there every single day. Yeah. Every single day, looking for a blessing. Yeah. That man laid there asking an alms. He was looking for something that he couldn't obtain on his own. You say, what could that be? This man thought that maybe it was food. He couldn't go out and work on his own. He couldn't bring money into his own household on his own. But God come by, and Jesus, and, and well, these two, these uh, Peter and John come by, and they said, "Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee." And these people witnessed this. But where I want to get to tonight is what were they wondering? What are you wondering tonight? I began to think of all the things in this Word of God that we've heard is true. These aren't just stories. These aren't just things uh, that, that didn't happen. These aren't Hansel and Gretel like Heath was talking about this morning. These aren't just fairy tales. These aren't just uh, things that, uh, that, this, that somebody wrote and brought up with in their own mind. These are real things that happened uh, to men and women in this Word of God. It was real things that happened to people that walk this earth that we walk on. And we read... How that God delivered them. How that God gave them strength every single day. We read how that God showed up on their Damascus road just like He showed up in mine. But seconds later, seconds later, they just witness and see a move of God, a man who's laid here for years, receive His strength. And now they're wondering. 
I began to think about how the devil might work in their mind. I began to think about of those people that were standing there on that porch. And I'm sure there were people there that uh, the, uh, the Word says you'll, you'll serve one master, you won't serve two. I began to think there may be two, uh, two types of people there. There may be people there uh, that didn't understand, that didn't know, uh, that, that maybe they had heard the Word of God, but they had never accepted Christ as their personal Savior. And I began to think of the other folks there uh, that may think, God, I've been praying about something. And I've continued and continued to pray about it. And I've not seen answers yet. After they just seen a move of God that was unexplainable. After they just seen a move of God that they couldn't explain how it happened. They're already wondering. They're already wondering. You see, I think about in our lives... I think about how many times that God's moved in this church. I think about how many times God's moved in our lives. And we've sit here and we've seen it a day in and day out from one service to the next. From a Sunday, no- from a Sunday morning service to Sunday night to a Wednesday night service. We see how people get up and they testify about how God's been good in their life. And they want to get up and they want to talk about how good He is. But on Monday, Satan shows up. And you're going to wondering. You're wringing them hands back and forth and you don't understand. You don't understand how that your situation could turn out for the good. And I want to try and explain to you tonight. You see, I read in this Word of God where that there are certain things. You know, in our eyes we see things uh, as one way. And it's hard sometimes for us to see it any other way. Uh, but I, I begin to think about the things in the Word of God uh, that are unordinary. How could, how could Joshua lead a group around the walls of Jericho and the walls come crumbling down? How could that happen? You see, in our minds... I, I was reading a thing uh, with, a, with a soldier and he said, he said, you don't understand until you're at war and you see somebody dying and they're fighting for their life. He said, you don't understand at the will to live that humans have. We have such a will to live. Uh, what comes with that will to live is that will to do things ourselves. What comes with that will to do things ourselves is we interject ourselves in God's plan. We want to figure out a way that we can handle it and we don't have to hand it all to God. It's easy for us to look at our situation and say, this is what I've done. It's it's easy for us to look at our situation and say, "This this is how I handled it. It's easy for us to look to somebody else and say, I see your situation and this is what I've done to take care of it. Sometimes it's easy for me to look at my situation and say, God, I've cut out all the puzzle pieces and I need you to place this in here today. And tomorrow, when you answer that prayer, I'm going to give you the next puzzle piece. And I need you to place this puzzle piece here tomorrow. It'll coincide with this one. You see, God has a plan and His plan is perfect. I began to think about Joshua again when they were, when they walked around, when they marched around the, uh, the Jericho walls. It would seem really unordinary for a harlot named Rahab to help them boys and be in the midst of that. Don't that seem unordinary to you? In my eyes, it seems unordinary. It doesn't make sense to me. I began to think about Noah. I began to think about him loading all these animals and, all, and, and his family and loading them onto this ark because they said there's going to be a flood and nobody understood what a flood was. It seemed a little unordinary. I began to think about... Saul on his road to Damascus and how that uh, God had taken his sight away where he couldn't see anything. That's when God, that's when uh, Saul had the Saul had uh, a change of heart. That's when God changed his life. That's when he became a new man. That's when he was Paul. That's when uh, God take, took a murderer and turned him into a man of God. That's where God took a man that didn't have no hope and he brought him to light. That's when that preacher man stood up here and talked about when the high met the low. That's exactly what he was talking about when that high met that low. It seems a little unordinary, don't it? You see, sometimes 
in our situation, we look in our own life and we say, God, this ain't the way that I had it planned out. This ain't the way that I seen it happening. This isn't the way that I seen it working out. This seems a little unordinary. I thought about Samuel. I thought about when, when God spoke to Samuel and he said, he said, go to Bethlehem and see Jesse. He said, see a man named Jesse and I'm going to, I'll let you know what, what you need to do. He said, you're going to anoint a man to be king. And Samuel said, I don't know about that. Samuel said, Saul will have me killed. You see, that goes back to that when I start interjecting myself. That goes back to when I start interjecting myself. Things don't work out like they're supposed to. You see, I thought about, about Jonah when God gave him a plan to do. And the next thing you know, they was casting lots and they had thrown him out of the boat. You see, that's when I interject myself. That's what happens when you interject yourself in the plan of God. But you see, the other side of that was Samuel said, Lord, I'll go. And I'll do what you'd have me to do. I'll do whatever you want me to do, God. I'll go down there. He said, I know it don't make sense. I know, I know that Saul, wants, Saul will have me killed. He said, but I'll go anyways. And he got down there. When he got to Bethlehem, he said he had seen all his sons. And he said, or, or I, I assume the way, that, the way that the word reads, it almost makes you want to think that Jesse didn't even want to show, his, show David. He didn't want to bring him up. And Samuel said, but there's got to be one more. You've got to have one more son. Because God told me I'd come here and I'd anoint one of your sons to be the king. You see, sometimes I feel like in our life we get to the point where we don't know what to do. We don't feel like we know where to turn. We feel like that everything's crashing in around us. We feel like that uh, the unordinary has happened. We feel like we can't see in our minds how that the situation could change. But you see, God's working everything out for our good. This Word says He works everything out to the good that love Him. I love Him. He's working it out to my good. If you love Him tonight, He's working it out for your good. I know, Lori, sometimes that your situation in life, it don't make sense. But He's working it out for your good. You see, the thing is, is we don't have to go through this thing alone. We might think that we're alone sometimes, but we don't have to. I want to read something else to you in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. You see the color of them letters there in Matthew 6 and 31? That means Jesus said it. That surely must mean that it's the truth. I believe everything in this Word of God is true, but if it's in that red, I'm going to take it to heart. It says, Therefore take ye no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Clothed. But notice what it says here in parentheses. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. You see, at this time, that was the Gentiles was seeking. But you see, there was a day that the middle wall was broken down. That the veil was ripped in two. That I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat or drink. That I don't have to worry about where I'll get my clothes from. It don't, I don't have to worry about, I don't have to wonder anymore where I'm going to get my help from. I don't have to wonder if the Father in Heaven that's sitting in the mercy seat is advocating for me because I know that He is. You see, I was one of them Gentiles just like this Word said, but that ain't. I, I don't have to worry about it. He made a way for me. He made a way for you, amen. And go to Psalms 37 uh, in verse 18 and 19. It says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Amen. 
Amen. That sounds like an awful good God to me, don't it? I don't know what it's like to be in famine. There's people who have lived on this earth that knows what it's like to live in famine. I don't know what it's like to have to go without for a meal. I don't know what it's like to have to, to, have to go home and not have clothes to put on my back. But I know that there's a God in heaven that one day, if there's ever a time where that I don't have clothes, where I don't have a drink to put in my mouth, where I don't have food, the Father will sure supply my need. The Father will sure supply your need tonight. You see, I heard, a, I heard another man of God. I listened to a lot of preaching. And I heard another man of God. He had three things that he was kind of analyzing. He's going back and forth and comparing them. And I thought, Lord, let me hear that for this message. And I want to share it with you in my own words. You see, there are a few things in this life that I have seen. You see, I have seen the Colorado Rockies. Out there in Colorado, they're beautiful mountains. It's a beautiful place. I have seen what the San Juan Mountains look like in southern Colorado. It's, it's beautiful. There's no words can describe how beautiful that it is. You see, I have seen the Black Hills in South Dakota. It's wonderful. But you see, no words will describe what I have seen. There's no words that I can give you to explain what I have seen. You see, you got to get a taste of it for yourself. When you come down to the end of that wire, when you pull on that rope and you're at the very end and you're looking at the end of it, you've got to cling tight to that Word. It says in the famine, I'll be satisfied. you got to cling tight to that Word. It says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You got to hold tight to this word that says these things that you had to think for as a Gentile. Well, you don't have to think for that anymore. I don't have to take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You see, the other part of that, the second thing is, is there are places that I haven't seen. Things I haven't seen, but I could if I wanted to. You see, I haven't been to California and I haven't seen those sequoias out there. I hear they're beautiful. And I have seen them, but I could if I wanted to. You see, I haven't seen the redwoods in California, but I could if I wanted to. You see, I've never been to Alaska, but I could if I wanted to. You see, I'm preaching to somebody in here tonight It feels like whatever in their life that keeps hounding them and it keeps on driving you and you feel like you're raising and then it shoots you right back down. And you start going back up, you start climbing and then you get shot right back down. You see, there's peace and there's joy in knowing that you've beat the adversary. And see, even though you may have not seen it, you can. Even though that you may not have seen it, you can see it. You can see the victory, but the victory only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, I'm telling you tonight, you don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to stand on the porch and have to worry. You don't have to be greatly wondering where you're going to get your next meal from. You don't have to stand wondering if God's going to come through. He's going to come through. I'm going to take that to the bank. You can take it to the bank. But you see, there's a third part of that. The third part is, there is things that I can't see. I just can't see. And when you say that, there's a lot of folks that think, man, that, that's going to be rough. But I'm going to tell you tonight, these things that I can't see, 
These are the things that get me the most excited about the Lord Jesus. You see, I can't see why that God had sent His Son down here to die for me. It don't make no sense to me. I can't see why He'd send His Son to come down here and die on an old rugged cross for a sinner like me. He died on an old rugged cross for the murderers, for the people who's addicted in drugs and alcohol and pornography and tied up in a lifestyle of fornication. I can't see that. But I understand that He did. You see, there's other things I can't see tonight. I can't see a place called hell. You see, I've been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. I can't see that place called hell. I don't have to see it. I don't want to see it. There ain't a hair on my head that has to enter into that place. There ain't a hair on your head that has to enter into that place. Let me tell you something. The things that you can't see are wonderful. There's beautiful things out there to see. But the things that you can't see are fantastic. One day you can see heaven, and then another day you could see hell. But I don't have to see it. The last thing I want to give you There's one more thing that I can't see. In Psalms 37. You see, I was talking about... I was talking about getting down in yourself. I was talking about getting to the point where you feel like you ain't got no hope. Those people standing there wondering, and they don't know that God's working in their situation already. It might seem abnormal. It might seem odd the way that things are going right now. But God's surely got a plan. Psalms 37 and verse 25. David says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. You see, I can't see I can't see getting forsaken. I don't care how you read it. I don't care if you read it forwards to backwards, backwards to forward, from left to right. It don't matter how you read this Word of God. I'm going to tell you right now, that's something you cannot see. The Father in Heaven is your advocate. He's here for me. He's here for you. And He ain't going to leave you. He'll never forsake you. He ain't never going to walk away from you. He walks right beside me. So I love the days where I feel like I can feel His hands on my ankles and Him moving my my feet in the exact steps that He wants me to go because I trust in Him. Amen. If He'll do it for me, He'll do it for you. He's no respecter of person. But you say, I've been praying about something. I've been praying for my youngins. I've been praying for a situation and I ain't seen no light. I don't feel like I'm getting nowhere. I don't feel like it's looking any better. You see, there's one thing that can keep, for, keep you from seeing those results. In Psalms 37 and 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires of thine heart is what it says. But the first part of that says, Delight thyself. Yeah. You know what delight means? It means to make pleasing. You see, you might be praying that the Lord would move in your situation. You've read in this word where that He would make all the desires, He would give me the desires of my heart. You've read it. You believe it. Maybe you didn't read that first part. You see, you've got to make yourself pleasing to Him. I'm talking about each and every day waking up and deciding in your mind, I'm going to be different out in this world. I'm going to look different. I'm going to act different. I'm going to show Jesus each and every single day. I'm going to have a relationship with the Father. If you ain't getting up every morning and praying and you're not praying every evening, I promise you, I'd start there. I'd start there. You see, you can't make yourself pleasing to God if you don't have a relationship with Him. You can't make yourself pleasing to Him if you ain't talking to Him every day. You say, is that all it takes? Is that all it takes just to 
morning conversation and an evening conversation, you get those down pat, you'll get the midday conversation. Then we'll all work yourself out. You see, I want you to look at those things in your life. I want you to look at those battles. And I want you to look at them and I want you to say, listen, I don't have to wonder anymore. I know He's going to come through. I don't want to have to, I don't want you to have to wonder anymore. I don't want you to have to sit wringing your hands back and forth saying, God, I've been praying about this situation and you ain't showed up yet. God, I've been praying for my youngins and I ain't seeing no hope in sight yet. Know that He's working. I'm not telling you to say one prayer and be done with it. This Word says to pray without ceasing. Continue to pray, but you don't have to worry. You don't have to wonder. God's heard your prayers. Your prayers have met the same One who walked this earth. Your prayers have hit the mercy seat in heaven where He sits there in Almighty and all glory. And He answers your prayers and He answers my prayers. That's why this Word of God in in, uh, Song of Solomon, a lot of people quote this wrong. It said, Song of Solomon says, I am the lily of the valleys. There's a lot of folks read that and say, well, it says he's the lily of the valley. I think what it says. There's an S on the end of that, valleys. That's because he's working in your valley. And he's working in your valley. And he's working in your valley. He can be in yours and mine at the same time. It's not a God that that just focuses just on you and you only. It's not that I have to wait in line and I have to wait for Him to show up. I can call on Him at any time. Brother Jerry, I can call on Him in the midnight hour when nobody else understands. And I can say, Jesus, I need You in my valley. And He can show up. Just know tonight that you don't have to wonder anymore. Diane, come to the piano. If everybody would stand, every head bowed and every eye closed. I've preached to you my heart tonight. I've preached to you exactly what the Lord's given me to deliver to you. I want to know is there somebody here that's struggling? Would you let go a little bit of your pride and say, sometimes I get a little weary. And God, I want to come to this altar and I want to give it all to you. And I don't want to have to wonder anymore. I don't want to have to wonder about my youngins. I don't want to have to wonder if there's an advocate advocating for me. I've just read to you out of the Word of God where He'll never leave you nor forsake you. We're in a time of famine. You'll be satisfied. I know I didn't get up here to hear myself talk. I know there's folks in here that you're struggling and you need a hand. But see, the thing is, is you have to reach out to that hand. He wants to help you. He wants to give you strength like you've never had. Some of you women, come pray with this woman. See, I listened to a story the other day. man said, I don't understand. He said, how that there's a God in heaven that I didn't have a decision whether I was brought here or not. My birth was sanctioned by God. I was brought here Because He had a plan. But if I don't choose Him, then I'll get punished for it. Another man looked at him and he said, if you'd went on a vacation with your family and they'd took you out on a boat out in the middle of the ocean and you fell out of that boat, somebody's trying to toss you a raft. Somebody's trying to toss you a life vest. Somebody's trying to toss you something just to get by. What do you say? Well, I didn't choose this. Do you just turn it down? 
Do you turn down the help that's offered to you? Or are you going to say, you're going to let go of your pride and say, God, I, must, I need a hand from you. I need a touch from the Almighty Father so that I can know that I don't have to wonder anymore. That I don't have to question whether He's heard my cries. He heard the cries of those in the bottom of that boat that night. And He spoke everything. And the wind's calmed. You see, He can do the same for your situation tonight, but you've got to trust Him. You've got to have faith in Him. thank you tonight I thank the Lord tonight for helping me I thank the Lord for uh, the liberty that I felt God surely is good to each and every one of us and I think oftentimes we forget to praise him for what he's done for us in our lives I think oftentimes we forget the severity that our situation was in a lot of times we forget how bad it was I told Brother Andrew, I said, I don't turn back. I can't look the other way. Because when I come to the Lord, it wasn't like everything I had going on was great. It wasn't like my life was perfect when I come to Him. I come to Him looking for something better. And He's got something better for you tonight. I pray it was a help to you. I appreciate the Lord tonight. I appreciate you being attentive. My mind is going